When I got my medical records, they were hot. They just came off the photocopy machine. The first page I saw, it said 46XY male pseudohermaphrodite. That was fucking crazy. And I started flipping through and seeing other things, like the gonad was abnormal. My clitoral enlargement was 1.5 centimeters. Testicular feminization. This is about the vaginoplasty. The chromosomes are XY. This one talks about when they removed my undescended testes. The narrative they were crafting for my parents was that I was like an underdeveloped female child and that all the procedures they would do would help me develop into a fully developed female child. They didn't want to say that like, I'm actually intersex, I'm actually not female or male. In this whole stack of paperwork, there's never any mention of what I needed or I wanted. My voice is absent from this entire stack of medical records. Pigeon Pagonas was 18 when they learned the truth about their medical history. It was like getting kicked in the stomach and just feeling like your whole life is a lie. It kind of was like that movie with Jim Carrey. I'm not good at remembering movies. Truman Show? Yeah, a sex and gender Truman Show. Where like, I think at some point he realizes these people kind of constructed this narrative for him. And then he's like, holy shit, nothing's real. I didn't understand gender and sex outside of the binary at that point. So my only conclusion at the time was, I was a boy, I'm a boy, and they all lied to me. And as I grew up and I learned, it's not that simple. It's not, I wasn't born a boy and I wasn't born a girl. I was born an intersex. Intersex is an umbrella term that covers a range of medical conditions which result in a person being between the typical definitions of male and female. Some of these conditions result in what doctors call ambiguous genitalia. When this happens, parents decide whether to have their child undergo surgery to normalize their appearance. What did the doctors tell you when Pigeon was an infant and you noticed some differences? They needed to um, do like a vaginal opening, some work on the clitoris because it was larger than like a normal. And it would look like she would grow up with like feeling damaged or broken like a little penis. It would grow. And this would be very bad for her and hard on her mentally, emotionally, psychologically. How did the surgeries that were done on you as a child affect you now? The surgeries left me with tons of scar tissue and nerve damage and just complications and, and really making things difficult in terms of sex and pleasure. My body from like the pelvic area to like here. I think this part of my body still to this day is very foreign to me. Do you regret choosing surgery for a pigeon? Oh boy, yes. Yeah, I do. I know I felt what I was doing then was saving my child and doing the right thing. And at all, I was doing more harm than good. Pigeon now identifies as non-binary and uses they, them pronouns. They founded a group called the Intersex Justice Project and are part of a growing movement of activists calling for an end to medically unnecessary surgeries on infants. So this is an American Urological Association meeting. There are urologists in here with the Society of Pediatric Urology who are content to still do these surgeries. Shame on them not recognizing the harm that they've done to intersex children and adults. These surgeons have gotten away with these medically unnecessary surgeries for too long. Their time is up. <laughs> Fix your hearts, not our parts. Fix your hearts, <laughs> not our parts. This movement is no longer confined to the streets. The big fight is in state legislatures. The California State Senate passed a resolution in 2018 saying surgeries that aren't medically necessary should be delayed until the child is old enough to consent. But that resolution was non-binding, and activists want enforcement. Not surgery. Keep your scalpels off of me. Lawmakers in five states have introduced bills to ban certain procedures until the child is old enough to choose for themselves. All we're asking colleagues is that the person who's being operated on be able to weigh in. It's that simple. Not all former patients support a ban, though. Some say the surgeries they had as infants saved them from physical pain and emotional distress. 
I know Senate Bill 201 would have created additional hardships for me and my family. I know a bill that blocks access to health care assumes every person is the same and discredits mental health would have made my life worse. And the doctors who perform these surgeries have mobilized in opposition. The Societies for Pediatric Urology is lobbying against these proposals, calling them an extraordinary overreach. Vice News spoke with Dr. Beth Drzwecki, who serves on the SPU's Intersex Task Force. Pediatric urologists are neither for nor against surgery. We are for the individualized care using a multidisciplinary team to treat the patient and the family. What would you say to a parent who looks at their intersex child's genitals and says, this doesn't look normal, I just want it to look normal? I really try and enforce with everybody, patient, family, that everybody has their own normal and maybe help them understand the umbrella of intersex a little bit more closely. In almost all healthcare situations, parents have the best interest of the child uh, at hand when they're making these decisions. So for example, you think a parent's fully within their rights to have a child's healthy functional clitoris reduced if they're uncomfortable with how it looks. I think that that decision is made as a team together about what is going to be in the best interest of the child based on the specific diagnosis for that child. But sometimes a decision is based on a social idea of what that clitoris should look like, right? There are situations that support doing that um, aberration um, early on, and we do have data that supports that, and therefore, Um, When a family chooses that option, we feel comfortable supporting it. Our understanding of the clitoral anatomy, of intersex diagnoses overall, has dramatically changed, as well as our approach to children who are born intersex. But the main point that the activists are making is, I didn't choose this for myself. Historically, there was not very much transparency at all in Uh, children who are born intersex. Our goal now is to really talk to the families, make sure that they understand the decisions that they're making. And furthermore, we also disclose this information to the children along the way with age-appropriate information. Legislation that prohibits healthcare options for all patients or generalizes medical care for everyone poses a disservice and possible harm for some children who may benefit from the surgery. Other urologists are now breaking ranks and speaking out in favor of legislation. Dr. Barbara Chubach is an adult urologist at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York. Who ultimately should have the choice for these surgeries? The child or the parents of the child? To the extent to which it is safe, the decision should go to the child. Whenever he, she, they are old enough, thoughtful enough, empowered enough to make that choice. So do you think decisions about some surgeries should just be taken away from the parents entirely? I reluctantly say, yes, yes, I do. Why? I fear that out of fear or out of a desire for their children to conform to their own ideal vision, parents are, with the best intentions, seriously restricting their children's autonomy in ways that are irreversible. As a doctor, are you okay with the government saying you cannot perform this procedure on a patient? (laughs) You're getting at, do I support the the bill in California? Um, As a doctor, I would say that I reluctantly support the bill. I really don't think that anyone really wants government legislation to be inserted into the doctor-patient relationship. The trouble is that since the 1990s, Urologists have consistently failed to address the very valid concerns raised by activist patients and and their families. We have collectively failed to permit a voice to those who, despite our very best intentions, have been hurt by us. The chief and cardinal tenet of medicine is first do no harm. We have evidence of harm. We need to step away from that and see if maybe we can do better. We're pushing for a shift in the way that intersex people are treated 
towards a first do no harm approach. Surgeries can still happen, but the person can grow up and make a decision and have autonomy over their body. And that's huge. It's a human right. Bodily autonomy and integrity is a human right. And so we want everybody to have that ability.